everyone. Uh, we're very excited this week uh, to talk about one of the newer treatments in medicine that you probably have heard about uh, and have a lot of questions about. So this is going to be stem cell week. And with us is a national expert, Dr. Todd Ovakaitis, uh, who was first in his class in high school and won the coveted Bosch and Loam Scientific and Bucky Pioneer Awards. He's also first in his class at Northwestern University with the highest possible grade point average. Uh, and after two years was one of 26 people accepted into an accelerated undergraduate medical training program at Johns Hopkins wow. University and Medical School then completed specialty training in internal medicine and subspecialty training in pulmonary and intensive care medicine at Georgetown University Hospital. He was assessed by a faculty committee as one of the best residents across the board. I was that way. So yeah. He was inspired to move to California to understand energy medicine. And shortly after the journey, had a vision of communicating with the pure consciousness of DNA. This has resulted in co-inventing a laser-based interdimensional platform, which has numerous U.S. and international patents granted in the areas of nutraceuticals, agriculture, including cannabis, and especially stem cell biology. Wow. He um, is also the composer and at times co-conductor of Lumerian choirs that create patterns of tones and information that can accelerate expansion so of consciousness. Wow. I told you you were going to like it. smart, but like really interesting. <laughs> so, Dr. Todd, thank you so much for being on the Brain Warriors Way podcast. And before we get to Dr. Todd, whatever you learn, um, and we have to, of course, talk about the hippocampus because it makes stem cells every day. Um, what is the one thing you'll learn from this podcast? And we would love for you to write it down and then take a picture of it and post it on any of your social media sites, but you're going to learn a lot. Super excited about this. Um, I have so many questions about stem cells. It's one of those things that I think a lot of us, um, if you've got injuries or illnesses, we we think about doing. And but then there's so many myths and you know, is it ready? And we have all these ideas about it. So I'm really excited about this. And I want to get some of those questions answered. And I'm sure that you guys do too. So don't just post, you know, what you've learned. We want to know your questions as well. So we love answering those questions and hopefully we will get some of those answers today. Great. So, Dr. Todd, tell us more about wh why you have just been so excited about this field. Well, my great interests, really, I would say, are health, wellness, and longevity, especially as it relates to the human potential. And since I was in the eighth grade, I had this passion for DNA and understanding it in every aspect of it and had this inner knowing that if we understood everything about DNA, that we'd be able to figure out how to eradicate any illness as well as to rescript our biological program, how long we can live and how youthful and healthful that we can be at it. It's so and interesting. I, so most eighth grade boys are want to know everything they can know about girls. And you were already focused on DNA. Like that, yeah. that just says you're very different right there. <laughs> Probably sadly, really. But <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That's kind of wild cool. that you were already focused that far ahead into the future. And did you, t you told me you did some work at NIH uh, as well. Was that yes. in stem cells? Yes, that is actually where the stem cell story began. And... The context was we had just created a new type of laser technology, and we can talk a little bit about that. It, it kind of helps to be able to show the diagrams to understand the geometric relationships. But fundamentally, what we invented was a way to recombine laser waves in a profoundly different way. 
So normally, laser waves are in phase. That's how you get a so-called amplified wave. And what we did was create an optical invention where you could recombine the waves to be exactly out of phase. So when they're out of phase and you add them together, you actually get a sum zero of the electric and magnetic fields. And with no net so-called E or B field, then the beam can go much more deeply through a medium. Uh, mm. For example, we work with red for our stem cell therapy, and the red wavelengths typically only go about five millimeters through tissue, which is not very far, maybe a quarter inch. And when we recombine the waves in this manner, at least in theory, that wave pattern can go all the way through the body from one side to the other. Oh. So it's a vibrational signal. In a sense, we convert transverse waves of electromagnetic energy, which are photons, into longitudinal waves that are more sound-like. So it's literally called photoacoustics, or delivering a sound wave-like vector through a medium. And wow. yeah, the NIH connection comes in where we built our first device, and we built it in red because it was cost-effective to work at that wavelength. And the question was, will that waveform interact with anything and do anything? It might go a thousand times more deeply through a medium, but because of its structure, there might not be an effect. So the question was, will it do anything? And I had a colleague at the NIH whose specialty was bone marrow transplantation, and she allowed us to do an experiment uh, and we had a technology transfer agreement with the NIH for this. And we passed the beam through a flask of stem cell-like cells, uh, uh, technically called KG1A cells. And we did it in a typical experiment for five <laughs> minutes and 15, 30, and 60 minutes. And the question was, will it do anything? So we were more than astounded. It was our eureka OMG moment, when one day later, after having removed the lasers, that in every single flask from five minutes to 60 minutes, we saw visibly with the naked eye, a line of cells where the beam had been. Wow. So the profundity of that was that we had stumbled upon an architecture of vibration, a homing signal <clears throat> that strongly attracted stem cell-like cells to be where the beam had been and for the cells to adhere to each other, which of course is critically important for a stem cell to get the information or instructions of what it's supposed to do or become in tissue. So that was the observation. And if I understand it right, what's different about your approach with stem cells is that you basically use laser guided technology mm -hmm. to get the stem cells to aggregate mm -hmm. and go where you want them to, which is very different. And I was actually, when I was talking to my team about having you on, I got this crazy idea that if I take a laser and shine it on the wall, I can drive my cat anywhere I want the cat to go because <laughs> the cat will just follow the laser. And I'm thinking, I wonder if that's similar that you're not really making the cat crazy. What you're doing <laughs> is, uh, and I'd never heard about this mm -hmm. before with stem cells right. and, and I'd had stem cells for my shoulder. They didn't work. Um, but my mom had them and this is why your pulmonary pulmonary experience was important to me. She had pneumonia every year that almost killed her for like eight straight years. And then she inhaled stem cells. And really, this has not been mm -hmm. a big health issue. No, she didn't have COVID. Since. Mm -hmm. She survived COVID. Wow. Um, okay. And so, I, you have a question? No, I'm just curious, because of the laser-guided stem cells, because one of the, the things I have heard in the past is that when they just inject them, so the stems, I'm, I'm wondering if the laser guided um, therapy helps to preserve more of them. It could, because they're going into one location or a very specific location, does it help in some way from that standpoint? 
It can, yes. And whether the cells live or don't live is another set of questions about the type of cells being used. Ah, that's an, okay. Yeah. And the biggest issue there is the distinction of whether the cells come from the same person, which is described as auto or autologous, or if it comes from a different person, which is called allo or allogeneic. And in general, allogeneic stem cells, unless they are literally a perfect tissue match, uh, will only last for a relatively short while in tissue. That so, makes sense. Yeah. So, for example, cord blood is being used relatively regularly in the U.S., and it's actually somewhat contrary to the regulations around it, but that's a, a different set of questions we might talk about. And the basic utility is that the cells not being a good match, unless they just coincidentally happen to be a close enough tissue match, that in general, those cells will only last at most for a few weeks in tissue. They will provide cytokines, chemicals that are growth, regeneration, and repair factors, and mm -hmm. there can be benefits from that. Mm -hmm. But as far as those cells actually incorporating in tissue as new cells, that generally does not happen. So our work is almost exclusively now with autologous cells, mm -hmm. cells derived from that same person, uh, prepared uh, in a way that the cells have high viability. And we use a class of cells that is very unique that we can describe their features that are incredibly powerful that are a perfect match for that person, that are small enough to get to the lung when you inject them, and also small enough to cross the blood-brain barrier, especially when given a photoacoustic homing signal to uh, increase their probability that they go where you want them to go. In essence, we and have- that's what we want to talk about. So when we come back, um, we're going to give you sort of a <clears throat> primer on the science of stem cells and what you need to know. And if you learn something, hopefully you did, write it down, take a picture of it, post it, hashtag Brain Warriors Way podcast. You can go to brainwarriorswaypodcast.com, leave us a comment, question, or a review. Um, Dr. Todd, we're just so grateful. Yeah. How can people find more about your work? Mm -hmm. So there's a site that, that gives general information, which is drtado.com. Dr. T-O-D-D-O dot com. That's yep. so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. All right. Stay with us. We'll be right back. If you're enjoying the Brain Warriors Way podcast, please don't forget to subscribe so you'll always know when there's a new episode. And while you're at it, feel free to give us a review or five-star rating as that helps others find the podcast. If you're considering coming to Amen Clinics or trying some of the brain healthy supplements from BrainMD, you can use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com or a 10% discount on all supplements at brainmdhealth.com. For more information, give us a call at 855 Nine seven eight one three six three.